Hey, it's me, Danny. Sorry I've been gone for so long. Sometimes life happens. But I'm back and I'm ready to hit the ground running. A few weeks ago, I asked all of you to pick a price category for a PC build list. The winning number was 1200 US dollars. I honestly was worried that 600 would win because I think that would be a real challenge. Now $1,200 is a healthy budget, or so I thought. Let's see what I came up with. I originally thought a $1,200 budget would be easy. Boy, was I wrong. This took me much longer to put together than I expected. Now this build uses all new parts, by the way, nothing used. I knew I wanted to go with AM5 since it offers the best performance per dollar and it's AMD's most recent chipset. And we're building a PC that costs over a thousand US dollars. Now the primary purpose of this computer is gonna be gaming. That means that you wanna spend as much of your budget as you can on the graphics card. That doesn't mean you can't dabble in a bit of content creation or maybe even streaming, I just didn't design it for that. This is simply a build list. I'm not putting this computer together today. I'm simply showing you what parts I would buy for a $1,200 budget. So if you're looking for me to build something today, this isn't the video for you. I have other ones for that. Let's jump over to my computer so I can use PC Part Picker to make it easier for you to follow along with the build. Now I'm using PC Part Picker here to show you this build list because it's easiest for me to go down the list and kind of check each box. Uh, and then I can put it in the description and you can just click it and view it at your leisure. In case you've never seen this website before, it allows users to compare prices and compatibility of computer parts from different retailers online. It basically shows you the best current price for each part you choose. I guess I better start with the CPU since I kind of cheated on this part. The processor I decided to go with is the Ryzen 5 7500F. It's got six cores and 12 threads with a boost clock of five gigahertz. It also has a TDP of 65 watts, which is why it comes with the Wraith Stealth CPU cooler in the box. Now this CPU is only available in the Chinese marketplace. So for the rest of the world, if you wanna purchase this CPU, you'll have to swing over to AliExpress. AliExpress is an online retail service based in China, kinda of like Amazon. With any online shopping, be careful where you purchase from. To be safe, I like to look for vendors that have high star ratings and show lots of sold items. Even though this processor can be purchased with the included box cooler, I decided to opt out of that option and pay for just the CPU only. It was $155.88 for the CPU by itself. So I was able to use that extra money to buy a upgraded tower cooler. This is none other than the Thermalright Assassin X120. This cooler is less than $20 and performs amazing for its price. It comes with four copper heat pipes, complete mounting capabilities, and an addressable RGB fan. This should have no problem cooling our 7500F. The motherboard was a tough one. I originally went as cheap as I could to squeeze into the next tier of GPU, but changed my mind in favor of a better board for upgradability. This is the Gigabyte B650M Aorus Elite AX, and it comes in at $179.99. Like I said, there are cheaper motherboard options out there, but this one gave so much more in terms of value that I couldn't pass it up. It comes with PCI 5.0, 2.5 gig LAN, four RAM slots, a built-in IO shield with Wi-Fi, and it's got tons of USB and front panel connectivity options. This is just a really solid choice for a motherboard. And for a $1,200 PC, I couldn't settle for entry level. Trying to squeeze as much of my budget as possible into the GPU, I got the cheapest DDR5 I could find with two requirements. It had to be 32 gigabytes and run at 6,000 megahertz. Pro tip, that's the sweet spot right now for DDR5. Team Group answered the call with their T-Create Classic DDR5 32 gigabyte kit, only costing $88. It doesn't have any fancy RGB or wild heat spreaders, but it will work perfectly for this build. Coincidentally, I stuck with Team Group for the storage as well. I chose the one terabyte NVMe SSD titled the MP44L. For $65, you get a terabyte of PCI 4.0 storage that runs up to 5,000 megabytes per second. It's not blazing fast, but you could always upgrade your storage later. Plus, a terabyte is enough to get you going, and it comes with a seven-year warranty. As I keep saying, the video card is the most important part of this build, 
and where you should be sinking most of your budget. My go-to in this price range is the Zotac Gaming RTX 4070 Twin Edge OC. It's nice and small, which fits the build design, and it's currently on sale for $540 over on Amazon. Due to the super refresh, 4070s have come down in price, which makes this one an easy sell. I was going to recommend the 4070 Super until I realized you'd be better off spending that money on a higher spec motherboard instead. Since I went with a micro ATX motherboard, I decided to go with a micro ATX case. It makes sense. This is one I'm familiar with here on the channel. You're looking at Montex Air 100. It's got a hinged tempered glass side, front panel ventilation, and four pre-installed ARGB fans with a hub to control all of them. Not bad for 60 bucks. Okay, $65. It was under 60 bucks when I started making this build list, I promise. This puts me over the $1,200 budget by $2, so sue me. It's worth the upgrade, believe me. I did a complete review on this case a while back, so if you're curious about all the juicy details, I'll leave it right up here. Lastly, the power supply. My choice is the Thermaltake Tough Power GFA3 750 watt. For $90, you get an 80 plus gold rating, fully modular power supply with one of the new 12 VH power connectors, even though the 4070 that I picked doesn't need it. Once again, you've always got to be thinking about the possibility of upgrades. This is the one area besides the motherboard that I wouldn't risk cutting corners on. And Thermaltake has been continuously improving their power supplies in recent years but somehow managed to keep prices relatively low. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not building this PC today. This is simply a parts list or guide as I like to call it. I will, however, give you some performance numbers that you can expect from a build like this because the 7500F will definitely allow the 4070 to stretch its legs. Hardware Unboxed is an excellent source of info when it comes to GPU reviews, and I've been watching their videos for years. Plus, they get all the cards that I can't afford, so, why not? I use their 4070 Ti Super Review because it's got most of the Super cards already on it and it'll give you a better picture of relative performance. I'm only looking at the 1440p results because that's what I recommend a $1200 PC be used for. Let's look at a few titles. First one up is Cyberpunk 2077, the Phantom Liberty DLC. 1440p high quality, you can see right here the RTX 4070 comes in at 82 FPS with 71 for the 1% lows. The 4070 Super is up here at 97. So the 4070 comes in right between the 6800 XT and the 6800 from AMD with 77 and 87. Not really that bad. It can't quite catch up to the 3080 10 gigabyte, but it does beat out the 7700 XT the 3070 Ti, and of course the 3070 from last generation. Then jumping over to Hogwarts Legacy 1440p Ultra Quality, they drop down a little bit and they can't even beat the 3070 Ti. So the RTX 4070 falls in at 72 FPS with 48 for the 1% low. I'm not sure if that has something to do with the VRAM buffer, but the 3080 10 gigabyte is all the way up here at 90 FPS. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for this specific title for this setup. Next one I want to look at is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This is still a pretty popular title, 1440p extreme quality. And the 4070 falls in just behind the 6800 once again, but it does beat the 3080 10 gigabyte for 103 to 96. The 1% lows are about the same. Now bear in mind, this is extreme quality settings. If you're playing a first person shooter like Call of Duty, I'm sure you're not gonna run maxed out settings on this. You're probably gonna dial it back a little bit to optimize your frame rate. So just keep that in mind. The last game I want to look at is The Last of Us Part 1. <laughs> last of Us, last game, dad joke. 1440p ultra quality, the 4070 non-super comes in at 73 FPS with 62 for the 1% low. It falls just behind the 3080 getting 76, but it beats out the 7700 XT once again with 66. Pretty big jump there if you ask me. The 6800 falls behind at 65, and the 3070 Ti is down to 55. Honestly, for the three FPS difference, even though the 3080 beats the 4070, I guarantee you the 4070 has a better gaming experience because of its 12 gigs of VRAM. You probably have less stuttering and stuff when you hit that 10 gig VRAM buffer. Of course, I will leave the complete video and Hardware Unbox channel linked below in the description so you can go check out the full story on all these new Nvidia cards. Well, $1,200 didn't buy what I thought it would. It bought more. 
I'm so impressed with everything I was able to cram into this PC. The AM5 platform coupled with DDR5, PCI 4.0, and a 40 series NVIDIA GPU, I'd say I hit all the marks. I was even able to throw some RGB lighting into the build on the case fan, CPU cooler, and that sweet Zotac GPU. I kind of want to build this thing now and see how it turns out. What do you think? Should I give it a shot? That's all I've got for this video. I just really wanted to get it out there for you. If you're interested in buying any of the parts I showed today, I can leave the PC part picker list link below in the description so you can go check it out, you know, on your own. Sorry it took me so long to make a video between going to CES, the holiday time, and I actually took a month long trip for my real job. So I've been out of town. Uh, things have just been really, really hectic here. I didn't think it was gonna be like this at the beginning of the year. 2024 is kicking my butt for sure. But it's nice to get back into the studio and kinda get some content out there for you guys cause that's what the whole channel's about is helping you with your PC builds at home. So if you know anybody that's interested in this type of content, make sure you kick them on over here to Danny's Tech Channel cause we'll be here as long as you wanna keep coming back. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.